Welcome to Looptopia. I'm going to give you an update of what have we have been doing this week. Had a lot of people tell me, hey man, can you make sure you document everything you're doing? Send pictures and videos. So this is what's happening this week. Stick with me. So we had to change our layout. And this will be a process where we're constantly changing things. But we were going to originally put buildings all around the fire tower as like little tiny homes but we realized something a little too late. This fire tower is one giant lightning rod. So it's over 100 feet high and although they're supposed to have lightning rods back in the day, I think ours was taken off. So the whole tower is just one giant lightning rod at this point. And if we're gonna have expensive solar equipment and all that kind of electronics, I don't think we should build right under the tower, as cool as it would be. So instead we're gonna build about 60, 70 feet away in that area where the light is. And I believe that's where we're gonna move our home location next to, there's some dirt laid out to start a garden too. In case you missed it, we had to fell a few trees. They were right up against the tower. There's a video about that. Wanna see it? And I still got all these things to clean up here. So what we're looking at is we're laying this garden in and we really need a place for storage and we we're going to put the conics like a big 40 foot storage container over there but we had a surprise come in so we got out here and there was a massive rain and wind storm that happened and it actually didn't drain so the conics is too heavy to drive across this mud without getting stuck the truck and the conics probably somewhere between 8 and 12,000 pounds i assume so we've been sitting, twiddling our fingers, waiting for this to soak in. But because there are certain spots here that are clay, it's not going down very fast. I think we're going to turn all this wet marsh into a garden for really water thirsty plants. And if you have any ideas of what plants do good in South Carolina in zone eight that love water, you're thinking maybe making this maybe a melon patch something like that that just soaks up water, we're going to use the water to our advantage. In the meantime, we dug footers for the conics. So these are about a foot deep, full of packed gravel, and then we're going to put block on top. So this is the back side, and we will actually put block down here, so we're going to try to get them to, when they deliver the conics, to drop it right on the block, and then we'll have to jack the front up. But I wanted to dig the footers out first. Now we're lucky because our frost line is only four inches. So I took these things down about a foot just to be safe. And we tamped it down really hard with a tamper. And now we will put block over that and set it up. And hopefully the storage container will come and we'll land it right on these blocks. I'll film the process and show you guys in case you're interested in getting your own storage container one day how the whole thing works. All right, so what I did is buy these solid blocks, landscaping blocks at Lowe's. And then we tamped the dirt really hard, but I'm sure it'll sink some more of the, the gravel. So it's a little higher than it needs to be. But right now, everything's level. So we will build these up about three high on the back side. And I think that'll be enough air flow to keep the Connex cool. Well, cooler. We've got all kinds of ideas to make it so it doesn't overheat in there. So this is what it looks like. We're only going to go up not even a foot because we don't want a big step that we have to step up and down from. We'll probably have to put some pavers in front so we drag out heavy equipment, but it's level right now. Now we put the weight on, it'll probably sink and we'll have to either jack it up, pull the stones out and put more gravel down. Or a lot of people just put like wood underneath and shim it up that way. But we don't want any wood on this thing that I got to deal with later. Because we're in a swamp and everything rots. Okay, so these are set and we had to fill in some ruts. And I took a bunch of old rubble. There used to be an old housekeeper here like uh, from the 1940s. And there's a bunch of old foundation rubble. I threw it in a ditch and covered it with dirt. And then Laura La showed me that they used to put pine needles at her compound. She grew, she grew up on a compound where they were self-sufficient. And uh, this will add traction. It's kind of like throwing down sand when you're stuck in mud. You throw pine needles on top. It kind of locks it in like adobe when you drive over it. 
Anyway, hopefully that'll be able to handle so the big truck doesn't get stuck in this mud. So if you've ever wanted a shipping container and don't know much about the process, basically, yeah, you should prepare the ground first. It's much smarter to dig the holes if you can do it. Although you can jack it up and dig them underneath, but that's, you know, not really that safe. But one thing they don't tell you is you need a good 100 to 160 feet of pull-off. So in other words, a straight shot that is over 130 feet for the container to be dropped. And they have to go completely straight. They can't turn or anything. So we had to adjust where we're putting the conics because of that. One thing we did consider is to have them drop it close and then simply hand winch it into place where we want it, like stick logs under it and roll it. But I don't know if we're going to do that. We might be able to drop it right where we want it. So where these boxes are is pretty much where we're going to start building. But there's a big problem that I got to handle first, and that is this pine tree. It is old and big and probably one of the biggest pine we have. And unfortunately, it's right next to where we're building. So I that's what they call a widow maker, where it drops through the ceiling and kills people. I think we have to take it down, and it looks kind of rough anyway. But I really hate cutting down an old tree like this. I mean, this thing's probably been alive forever. I'm having a lot of guilt with it, but I'm not sure what else to do. One of the other things that bugged me is, you know, this stuff is lop lolly pine. So really, all they really do with this is make flooring with it, siding, and pretty much paper mill stuff. And I don't know what to do with this wood on the farm after we cut it down. I'd love to call a timber place and sell it to them, but I don't think they'll take just a tree or two. I think they only take large loads. So there's a few other big trees that might have to come down, but I don't know what to do about this. If you have any ideas, comment. Most of you probably are gonna say, well, cut it up and make firewood. And you can make pine into firewood, but remember, we only have about two months down here that I'd even need firewood. Maybe only a month where we would need heat. So I don't need a massive amount of firewood and it'll probably rot before I ever use it. Unless we're gonna use it to cook. I guess if we got down to that, well, we do have solar ovens, so I'm not sure how much wood cooking we're going to do. The good news is we had really high winds, and both the garage and this ABC canopy tent... By the way, I've vented a lot in my life, and ABC canopy makes one of the best tents. So this thing didn't even blow down or didn't have an issue at all. Oh, by the way, we have a tent up now. Pretty exciting. A little eat and airy and place to plan projects. But I'll link that in the description. If you've ever wanted a pop-up tent, spend the extra money. ABC is awesome. They make really thick, strong poles. Also, in case you're wondering, if you've never vended, the reason we survived crazy winds is because of these straps. And you get these straps and you tie them down with dog ties, like what you screw in the ground to hold a dog. The straps are the whole reason because the, the stakes you put in are not enough. This thing will flip over in the wind and over you've got to put heavy duty straps and then you just hook over you hook over the uh, the pole like this also you can put pool noodles in if you have an older um, you know pool noodles corner to corner if you have an older tent that'll keep the water from pulling up but the new tents the ABCs you don't need those pretty nice so this is stage two this is the back side of the property it's a lot more quiet there's no road this is where we actually want to live live but it's going to take a while to, because we have to develop this entire road to come in and level, cut all these trees out and level this area. It's a whole thing. And we have to have enough sun, hello sun, to be able to run solar. So we have to cut enough trees away that we can have some solar. Or at least maybe top a few of the trees. I don't know. But this is where we're eventually going to land. And we'll see what happens. If we had the time and weren't in a race to get something up, this is where we would just start. But I think we're gonna make a caretaker house and we're eventually looking for someone to watch the property when we're not around and live out here and watch the garden in exchange for a nice safe place to live. So if you may be interested in that, remember that we are a plant-based homestead so we don't raise any animals or do any of that, but if that's your vibe and you're looking for a place, come talk to us. Thanks so much for checking out this update this week. Remember that I'll try to update you every week or two when we're doing something interesting. If you are new to the channel, we can't talk openly 
on YouTube. This is very watered down and censored. If you want to know what we really think and why we're doing this, we're over at Odyssey. We're also at Brighton and BitChute. I love those two platforms as well, but Odyssey is where we are mainly putting our stake. And if you go over through this link, there's a little code there. If you put in this code that's in the description, you get free crypto. So come on over, set up an account, and you can actually catch the live streams and the stuff that we're not allowed to put up here. Like here's a story I did about uh, medical devices that YouTube would never let me put here. So go check that out over at Odyssey.